This is the Defenders podcast on TV podcast industries, and we're talking about Agatha all along. Episode one, Seekest Thou the Road. Hey, Miss Agnes, uh, you feeling okay Stop today? Stop talking! How long have I been here? Uh, what? How long have I been living in this cesspool of a town? You don't remember. Catch me up. About three years. Three years? What? Oh, we try not to say her name. Ugh, because you're cowards. Because you're sheep. What have I been doing all this time? Well, you've mostly been a good neighbor, but a bit too casual with your boundaries. Call me nosy, I'll cut out your tongue. Welcome back, witches. Yes, this is the Defenders podcast on TV podcast industries. I am one of your natural sciences hosts, John. Welcome back, witches. I'm one of your other hosts, Derek. Oh, John, I've got me witches brew. <laughs> oh, have you now? I do. I do. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's... Um, Ye oldy witchy potion. Yes, well, it's rum and coke. Um, oh, okay. Rum was red for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Or is it about to go off? <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes. I'm drinking it like it is. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, we are back with the Marvel TV universe. Did you, I know. Did you notice that? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, Marvel TV. Yeah. But not only that, it feels ages since echo at the start of the year absolutely so it does. really good to be back yeah. with marvel whether it's marvel studios yeah. marvel television marvel tv marvel whatever it might be it is yeah. a marvel to be back with marvel it is it is it just feels like a year where we haven't had much marvel and this is our 10th anniversary uh, which I, I was talking about earlier on there's our 10th anniversary of podcasting this year and at the moment we have uh, Marvel back with Agatha all along. We have Gotham back on television with the Penguin coming out Absolutely. this week. Uh, we started out our podcasting career as Gotham TV podcast 10 years ago. So having both of those in a week is a lot. And not only that, not only do we have Gotham back and Marvel back, we also are covering the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. So we have Tolkien on the podcast too. So we have everything that we could possibly want in our 10th anniversary, John. But we are going to jump in and have a lot of fun with Agatha all along, I think. Um, the sequel to WandaVision, right? Oh, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, even actually the way the Marvel television logo is kind of mm -hmm. conceived, looks very much like one division. It does. Um, but equally, in this episode, we do have that kind of nice little sort of lean into the the the, the Scandinavian detective, <laughs> uh, the Scando detective shows yes. uh, with uh, Wanda Vision with a, an H and a Y. Yes. Um, so, good. yes, absolutely, this is one division the second season yes actually, yes to my mind exactly and it's like as if they take some characters from one division season one and had a spin-off and very connected to one division but uh we are of course going to spoil every single little thing about the first episode of one division so make sure you've gone out and watched it it's on disney plus right now absolutely two episodes have dropped on yep. a disney plus yes uh, but we are going to kick in with our spoiler filled discussion fellow defenders uh with episode one of agatha all along mm -hmm. seekest thou the road yes like dear that. friend in parentheses i'm really hoping these are the names of the episodes yeah, me too. Uh, at the moment, we're taking these titles uh, from the screeners that we've been given. So yeah. normally screeners kind of come to you as though it's like a Meccano Lego kit that's mm. made. So you wouldn't know it's by Lego and you wouldn't have any clue who's made it. Yeah. Uh, other than the fact that the name of the podcast is plastered uh, over the screen right along the yep. with normally someone's name. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's difficult to know whether it's just kind of a quote for this episode yeah. or whether it is actually the episode title. So uh, apologies if it isn't um, Seekest Thou the Road mm -hmm. for episode one. 
we tried our best and it gave us the ability to watch them early which is awesome thanks exactly. so much to, to exactly. Disney Ireland for that uh, really good of them to, to provide the episodes to us early um, and they are a lot of fun we are we will get into discussing it but of course we talked about all the stuff that we're going to be covering at the moment if you're not subscribed to us make sure you go over to tvpodcastindustry.com you can subscribe to any Wiccan or Android loving podcast player over there uh, of your choice to subscribe to TV Podcast Industries and you get access to all the shows we're covering including of course Agatha all along uh, we would love Love to hear your thoughts as you've watched the episode. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop it over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries where you can join the chat all about the episodes of Agatha all along. Absolutely. Derek, uh, give us some of the episode details, will you? Really easy one this time to talk about our, <laughs> our, our episode details. Jack Schaefer was the showrunner for WandaVision, and she's back once again as the showrunner for Agatha All Along. And she wrote and directed this episode, the first episode of Agatha All Along. Excellent stuff. Quite cool, huh? Yeah, very good. Always a good sign in our TV podcast industry's law. It or is. the Gotham TV podcast or Defenders TV podcast law as... As has gone through the ages of mm-hmm. podcastery, um, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, that if the showrunner is kind of involved, at least in the writing, mm-hmm. if nothing else, in the first and last episodes, you normally get quite a good show because they like to bookend so that the start and the end and then the middle is a collaborative effort. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But you'd also think what the cool thing about this is. Jack Schaefer was the showrunner for WandaVision, the first and probably most successful of all of the Marvel TV shows. So bringing her back on board to do this sequel series, focusing on the character of Agatha, who's the best person to do that? The person that knows that story yeah, so well and, and figured out how to create this in- interesting version of Agatha Harkness, uh, Agatha Harkness in the comic books. Um, a very much background character, but absolutely came to the fore in WandaVision. So very excited to get chatting about Agatha Harkness when we get into it. But John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Agatha All Along, Episode 1, Seekest Thou the Road? Sure. In the quiet town of Westview, Detective Agnes O'Connor arrives at a cliché crime scene where a woman's dead body has been found with blackened hands. She's the only one that can solve the case. During her investigation, dealing with many familiar Westview residents, she learns the woman was killed in Eastern Europe and her body has been dropped in Westview. Back at the station, FBI agent Vidal is stereotypically put on the case too. Agnes hates the agent but can't remember why. Agent Vidal pays a visit to the characteristically lonely Agnes to try to get her to remember who she is. While the women drink together, a teenager breaks into Agnes's house. She chases down and captures the teen, but while questioning him, he tells Agnes he knows who she really is and begins speaking in Latin. He has cast a spell that begins to break Wanda Maximoff's hold on Agnes. With a final push from Agent Vidal, Agnes learns her real name. It was Agatha all along. She learns that following the death of Wanda, Agatha experienced a break from the character of Agnes and began living out a fantasy as a true crime detective with the help of the other Westview residents. Agent Vidal reveals herself to be a rival witch who wants to punish Agatha for all her previous transgressions. She's not the only one. All the witches, known as the Salem Seven, also want to punish Agatha, but she negotiates with Vidal to wait until she's back to full power before defeating her. With Vidal dealt with, Agatha turns her attention to the young magic user who broke her free from the Scarlet Witch's spell. Ooh, yes, very, very good. Who is this young teen? Mm. Uh, this this unknown magic user, I wonder. Well, um, yes, we will. I have a theory. We have lots of theories, but he is played by Joe Locke from Heartstopper, one of our favorite little shows. That is true. The that is lovely, very lovely, true. lovely, cute gay show um, on Netflix. Uh, coming back for its third season next month. Um, so very much looking forward to seeing Joe Locke over there as well. Yeah, but I'm really pleased to see him in this and yeah. to see uh, what he deals up uh, in this show, to be honest. Yeah. So um cannot wait to get into our spoiler-filled spells. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I will say really quickly, uh, his accent's really good. His American accent's really yeah, good. Yeah, it you know, is, He actually. only slipped up once or twice. Uh, yeah, there I were a few yeah. times where he kind of <laughs> sounded a little bit sort of squeaky English uh, yeah. 
boy, but he is also 23. Yes. So, I mean, that's the other <laughs> side of it. It's yeah. kind of like, okay. He's playing uh, a 16-year-old. Yeah, he's yeah. playing a 16-year-old, but yeah. he's 23. So, uh, let us get into our top <laughs> spells. Without further ado, spell number one, the true detective in the Twin Peaks of Westview. It is One Division season two mm-hmm. and the opening episode one, which is all paying homage to that Scando detective uh, sort of vibe. Absolutely, yeah, lots of little touches here that are references to that to the Scando uh, true crime dramas that were coming out. But I do think there's a lot of Americana over the last uh, a couple of decades that really is about those true crime uh, detectives. You know, true detectives was massively popular, especially this last season with Jodie Foster. Um, with Absolutely. Excellent show, excellent first, uh, an excellent season of the show, um, but all the way back to the original season. They, Matthew McConaughey, I mean, yeah. really good. Really, I really love good. that. Woody Harrelson, yeah. That they, season. They, yeah. They, they even did a poster tribute for Agatha All Along, which had um, Aubrey Plaza and Catherine Hahn striking the pose from the original True Detective. So they, they knew they were also taking from American true crime stuff. Yeah, exactly. There is definitely a moment in the opening sequence where the welcome plaque welcoming you into Westview looks exactly like the Twin Peaks plaque. Yeah. That, and, you know, so they know what they're they know what they're referencing. But as you say, that, that cool little touch that's in there that says um this is based on one the Danish series <laughs> one division. Uh, I thought that was a really a really fun touch. But as we go out through the episode, we meet loads of our characters that we saw in Westview in the in the in the first season in, in one division the first season I love this touch because just like back in one division which had every episode representing a half hour comedy series here even though we're representing a true crime show we have all of the characters that we met in one division at playing different roles again you know I exactly. love the idea that's definitely it I mean we are under no illusions this is one division season two mm-hmm. like down to the you know, the style for this show. Yeah. Um, it is the returning cast as well, which is so good to see. I mean, it, it is, given we've watched the second episode, which is also going to be um, available to anyone uh, who watches it when it's released, mm-hmm. then you'll see that it, it's it's a touching point for these two. It's a bridge, you know, and in a yeah. sense, I think this episode is very much a bridging episode to some degree. Yeah. It picks us up where we left off with, um, you know, seeing this familiar character in Agnes um, g- going through, you know, this, the, the, this investigation for a murdered woman in, in a similar vein to the way we saw Wanda and Vision and everyone else in the previous one. So it's really, really good. Yeah, and I'm sure Jack Schaefer was asked the question a few times uh, since she did uh, WandaVision. Could lightning strike twice? Could you do the same kind of thing you did with the first season? Could you make the second season into something similar like every episode is a is a, a genre? And here she's paying homage to it by doing a true crime episode in this first episode. Yeah. But the break happens in the first episode. It doesn't happen seven episodes in after she's done loads of different types of true crime shows, which you absolutely could have done. You could have done that for the second season. So I love that she's played the nod to it. I love that we get to see characters like Dottie and Herb and Dennis and Phil and Norm and Mrs. Hart. You get to see all of them back playing different roles within this genre uh, type. And you're thinking, or at least I was thinking watching the episode, oh, they're, they're all back under some kind of spell again. Maybe Agatha has broadcast a spell out there that turns it all into a true crime they're all playing these roles i thought that was really interesting yeah but i mean this is what i quite like and i I guess we'll get into it more with spell number four Mm -hmm. but i like the fact that in a sense you know you could see it as and I, i think agatha says you know that you know have you been humoring me when she finds the reality yeah but it's actually you know Herb and and others have been helping her. They've been allowing her to be this detective. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, so through the course of this episode, she is running this investigation to find out who the murdered woman is in the woods. And mm-hmm. um, you can clearly see that it is some kind of magic user from the black fingertips well, yeah. uh, that you get um, from... Uh, using magic, at least in the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. And I know that comes a bit later as to the actual reveal. Yeah. But, I, you know, I like the fact that uh, with a number of the different clues, like the finding of the sort of library check card, uh, you have Dottie Jones as the librarian. Um, 
Agnes's colleague, um, her her police colleague is Herb Feltman, mm-hmm. also her neighbor. I love um, that his first line to her is "Hello, neighbor." It didn't didn't expect you to be here, and it's like when you realize that Herb's playing along with this what he thinks is a fantasy world that she's experiencing. You go, "Oh, yeah. what? that's really interesting." He went "Hello, neighbor" to her to her. Didn't expect to see you here, and then went, "Oh, I need to play this role." in her fantasy exactly um, and yeah. and and we see all these people are mm-hmm. playing a role when confronted with agnes yeah um you know there's phil jones as chief of police who's dotty's husband but also then we have norm uh who's the pawnbroker uh, who's looking at one of the clues that she's picked up from the crime scene mm-hmm. and of course it's kind of slightly veiled in mystery in the sense that you know she has been assigned this by someone who says you're the only person that can do this uh, well i think it was from the chief of police but yeah. um and goes to norm with this Broach this locket that finds, which is very recognizable mm-hmm. um, from the season one of WandaVision. So, yeah, this is really kind of just nicely played as we move through this um, uh, this investigation. Yeah. I think the other thing that I like about this investigation is ultimately the reveal of who the murdered woman is. Absolutely. Really good, yeah. linked straight into the MCU. Yeah. And I like that. And I always like that about WandaVision. It was really kind of quite sort of full on and open about how it connected in with the MCU. I always sometimes I thought all the Marvel shows did it maybe a bit less so. Yep, yep. Or I guess they had another kind of element to it which was trying to introduce characters, which yep. is also maybe a bit different, certainly when they've not had a full movie yep. or ten movies. Where well exactly. Been, you know. Exactly. But uh, I like that they play into this again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the other things I love about this section of the show is the true crime tropes that you get. You know, I really enjoy the reveal when the uh, police chief is talking to uh, to Agnes and saying to her, you know, you're not going to like what happens next. And guess what? She's got a new partner, a brand new partner that she doesn't like that's arrived that has to be involved in the case. You know, something you see in every single one of these true crime police shows. Um you even see uh, Agent Vidal turning up at the house later on, uh, played by Aubrey Plaza, which turns up at Agnes's house going, the trope is that you can't possibly have a happy life and also be a detective. You have to have a whole house that's destroyed and you have to be separated. You have to be sitting alone drinking on your own late well, at night. that's it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but even I like yeah. the, the trope of the fact that she is the FBI agent. She kind of comes in almost as though she's going to take over this mm-hmm. local investigation and yeah. you have that conversation between Agnes and... And Agent Vidal, yeah. where it's like, so what is this? Is it because the body crossed county lines, state mm-hmm. lines, and all this kind of stuff? So yeah. I kind of really, really enjoyed uh, just just those little nods, you know, to that kind of genre. Yeah. But before we talk about Aubrey Plaza's Agent Rhea Vidal, let's talk about the teen for our spell number two. Um, so we have Joe Locke. Uh, playing this role here as the teen who breaks into Agatha's house while Agent Vidal is over visiting and having a couple of drinks, uh, as you do uh, in a in a uh, stereotypical uh, Scandinavian drama. <laughs> so he's broken into the house. Yeah, I mean, it's an introduction, isn't it, really? It, I mean, it, in this episode, it's simply this introduction and it's kind of slightly shrouded, slightly weird in mm-hmm. that this... This thief uh, knows, this goth thief knows more about Agnes than she knows about him. Um, And that, you know, things become a little weird. It's like there is this unpicking of the spell Mm -hmm. that uh, Wanda Maximoff has put on. And I, I think all the people pick that spell including um the fbi agent yeah um but it's it's like all of a sudden the interrogation after she's captured him for mm-hmm. breaking and entering becomes weird you know first of all agnes suddenly thinks that he could be the murderer because um you know she's really got nothing else to sort of hang on why he, he would be sort of breaking into her house. Yeah. But then all of a sudden the murder pics that she's showing him become pictures of flowers. Yeah. The two way mirror that 
Agent Vidal has been behind suddenly becomes a framed picture. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, uh, this youngster, this uh, thief, starts to recount uh, Latin. Yeah. Latin phrase over and over again. I, I do love, though, the interrogation when Agnes says to him, um, what did you come here for? What What did you steal from my house? And he, he goes... I came here looking for someone that had the respect of their peers and a decent home life, but didn't find it either here. Yeah, no. <laughs> great, great line from the team. It is yeah. really good. Um, <laughs> and ultimately, you know, then Agnes really kind of is slightly weirded out by this. Yeah. And so she says, you're spending the night here in lockup. Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. You know, she goes back to um, to find out, you know, she's kind of been... her. Her interest has been piqued. You know, she's now intrigued, yeah. and so yeah, I love I love how he reveals that the uh, that the crime scene photographs are uh, effectively pictures of the flowers between her and Herb's garden <laughs> next door. You know, the, again, as we get that reveal later on of of you know what's actually been happening with Agnes. You know, you realize that she's making all this stuff up, and I just love the idea that she'd be standing in her garden taking photographs of the marigolds next door or the, or the sunflowers next door and thinking this is the dead body that she's investigating. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I I think we can go on to spell number three as well. Because another person that's instrumental here in kind of jolting Agnes mm. uh, out of her sort of uh, blurry existence um, in, in Westview is the FBI agent Rio Vidal. Yeah, yeah. And I like how this is made so obvious. You know, you mm-hmm. could have kept this kind of under the radar, but um, you you realize there's more to Agent Vidal than meets the eye. You know, we have this great moment where she's asking Agnes, um, you know, do you remember why you hate me? And it's because yeah. the, the phrase, you know, is pointed at her in terms of her as Agatha Harkness, mm-hmm. not as Detective Agnes. Exactly. Um, but it equally plays as well in Detective Agnes kind of getting her back up over the fact that the FBI has come in and is is treading on the feet of the the local law enforcement, which is part of that, like, wonderful crime trope that's happening here where it's like, you know, the FBI have come in and we even get those kind of references, which is, you know, are you here because the body crossed state and county lines? Mm. Uh, that's why we can't have full jurisdiction over this investigation. So it, it's all kind of done really well. Yeah. Um, and, but I, I really like the introduction here of Agent Rio Vidal, who, you know, as I say, um, is equally the to pull Agnes out of this mm. blur, um, but for very different reasons, I suspect, than the team. Yeah. And it does, again, touch back to what was happening in WandaVision. We didn't realize until about episode four of WandaVision that uh, Wanda Maximoff knew exactly what was going on at all times. This was her vision that she was creating. Here, it's Agnes being subsumed by the spell that was put on her. So um, Agent Vidal trying to break her out of it and the teen trying to break her out of it is trying to reach in beyond the spell that's there. I, I really like that idea. Um, I, I do love how how Aubrey Plaza plays this role of Agent Vidal, though. I think it's really interesting that she's come in and it's it's like she's got that smirk on her face the whole time. She always plays that in all the roles that she's that we've seen her do. do. She was uh, in Legion playing the Shadow King. She played a brilliant role in White Lotus. She was in Parks and Rec as well as a, a, in a great comedy show. But she always has that smirk behind it, and it's used really well with Agent Vidal. What you see here is this rival of Agatha Harkness's who's walked into this situation, and she's going, hang on a second, this woman believes she's in a true crime TV show? Yeah. I'm going to just play along with this and work out what the heck is going but on. But that's what's really so good, good as well. You can yeah. sense that she's It's not necessarily all the satisfaction that she is craving like yeah. and as we see as the episode goes on but there is an element of satisfaction of seeing um her rival in agnes mm-hmm. kind of being so petty and weak around yeah. what she's doing and not right. being in control so she's actually reveling in it yes but at the same time A reveling rival she's not reveling in it because she wants and as we find out she wants to properly rival um mm-hmm. 
Agatha Harkness, not Detective Agnes. Yeah. Uh, and I like the fact that, you know, when they discuss the case, um, she's constantly saying and, and trying to disrupt the train of thought and the logic of Detective Agnes's investigation. Yes. So it's like, you, you say she was dropped there and um, there's no tracks of, of, of the victim. Oh, she must have been carried there. Yes, mm-hmm. but there's no there's no tracks of the Jane Doe or the perpetrator yes. here. It's like she's just landed there out of thin air. And it's yeah. like Agnes is kind of, whoa, you know, stop with this kind of like, there's no, there's no conceivable way that could have happened, mm-hmm. you know, and it, yeah. it's just was it really ma- was really it magic? Good. Do you think it was magic? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, love, it, I love the push it, from it, her. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, and um, that, and that push to the final reveal as she kind of builds on what the teen has done when he's uh, cast the magic spell, the Latin to break uh, that connection. When Vidal is standing in the room, going to her, there are two Jane Doe's in here. Which, when the the reveal, it's Wanda Maximoff's body in there. There's two Jane Doe's in here. Who's the other Jane Doe? And that pushes it over the edge to Agnes revealing it was Agatha all along. That's yeah. it, exactly. I, I and let's just sort of linger on that a moment. It, it's really good. I love that this, you know, is a tie-in to Multiverse of Madness, mm-hmm. um, and the. Uh, the fact that all the dark holds were destroyed in that moment, hence the fire at the library. Yes. I love that the dark hold would be in natural sciences, um, <laughs> which is kind of interesting to me. <laughs> well, you know, where you kind of would expect the natural sciences um, to be rather than sort of magic. But I love that the, you know, the the book is not explicitly uh, referenced as the dark cold here, but it as the um, dialogue and rhetoric, known history of learning and debate yeah. by Andrew Ugo. I'm <laughs> um, not entirely sure about the Andrew Ugo reference. No idea. But nonetheless, um, then you can take out dark hold from that title i genuinely when watching the episode i was writing this down i was i was going to use this as our pub quiz question for the first episode and i wrote down the the name of the book and i was going oh i wonder does this mean anything maybe if i just take the initial letters and as i did it i got the heart on screen was going d a or k yeah. like oh my god it's the dark hold of course because yeah. again this is connecting into dr strange and the multiverse of madness the the decision at the end of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse's Madness was that all dark holes across all timelines, across all of the multiverse, would be destroyed. And here we are, this book that has been so central to Agatha Harkness's life um, is destroyed in her hometown, and the place where all the other copies of the book would be is burnt. Um, so the the external world seeping into Agatha Harkness's world before it's revealed to her what's happening. I love yeah, the, I, I love the idea. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a really good connection. I really, really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think as well, you know, all these, again, the Dark Hold is such a huge influence. Again, it's another jolt almost. Yeah. You can see her pause and then she's interrupted by Agent Vidal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, it's really good. And what a great character when we see the reveal of who she is, that she's this rival witch that's coming to town to kill Agatha Harkness. Um, and has found, as I say, has, has found uh, Agnes, this true crime character. Um, but when Agatha comes back to herself, telling Rio Vidal that she just wants to get some more power before she kills her, why would you kill me now when I'm not at full power? And you see Vidal kind of going, okay, that makes sense. But there are also other people coming. The, Sa- the Salem Seven are also about to arrive in town to kill you as well, you know? Yeah, they they, they want her as well, you know, centuries old, and mm-hmm. they want her end, effectively. Yeah. They want to end her. I do like the moment, because as well, um, in this reveal, and just sort of, sort of spiralling back a bit to the teen, because when it becomes certain that Vidal is this rival witch that mm-hmm. wants to kill her, I like the way it's introduced because we see that the teen has actually been kidnapped by uh, Agnes uh, and has been bound and gagged and put Mm -hmm. in the closet. And she's like, what's happened here? Um, If he's real, then so's, and then Vidal comes 
breaking through into uh, Agnes's house. Yeah. Although at this moment she is Agatha, and Agatha using her cunning because she is powerless here. She has no, um, she has no magic ability, and she, you know, mm-hmm. kind of plays it off with i know you want to kill me but don't you want me to be formidable yeah like exactly. as a true opponent not just yeah. someone that you can just cut down uh easy as pie yeah um and then yes as you say we hear there's also other witches that are coming for agatha very much for the reason that she took all the witches magic well, absolutely. I, I think, yeah, which we yeah. saw in season one of One Division, when you get her backstory, yeah. where she effectively destroys her coven. Yeah, you know her coven from Salem. So you know we saw her back at the Salem uh, exactly. in Salem, thinking that she was on a witch trial, but actually it was a trial by other witches, and she killed them all. So, yeah. um, so this is the Salem Seven, I guess, who are chasing her down. Um, but that does very much lead on to our spell number four, the reveal of the reality of Agatha Harkness to Agnes you know it it started with that moment in the in the morgue as Agnes sees her name written on the the toe tag for Jane Doe uh, saying a Harkness you know as she begins to get that reveal and then goes into the awesome moment of Agatha Harkness in every costume that she wore throughout the series of uh, of one division, I thought that was really cool as she's going, oh, it's really hot in here, and suddenly she's wearing a big woolly jumper, and then she goes all the way through to her black and white self from the first episode of, of one division. It was a was great choice. Such a cool idea. Really yeah. good choice just to bring it home, to show her going through the ages mm-hmm. of her disguises yeah. in Wanda's own world mm-hmm. um, while she was there, and, and in terms of you know the reason for her wanting to sort of take Wanda's power yeah. so that she became even more powerful. Mm-hmm. So I love that we have Agnes remembering herself as Agatha um, and that she's been three years trapped in the cesspool of a town that is Westview. I like how Herb, her neighbor, is there to kind of say, you know, kind of reintroduce her back in where he mm-hmm. says, you know, you seem lucid today. You know, they have been, in a sense, helping her. You know, we get these suggestions um, through this episode and a bit into the next episode where, like, she's let herself go, at least domestically, mm. in that there's not really much in the fridge, there's not much in the house, and it's been the residents around her, like her as her neighbour, yeah. kind of helping her, looking after her, but also, and the, of course the way Agatha takes it is that, the town had been humoring her, which is not a great thing, by being the uh, the pawnbroker, by being yeah. the, the, her police colleague, by mm-hmm. being uh, by not pretending that they know who she is and going along with the fantasy of the true detective. So I yeah. really enjoyed uh, that. Uh, as I said, yeah, it's really important though as well. You know, the the end of one division. While we dealt with our major characters of Wanda Maximoff, who went off and eventually, you know, went on to be the villain of of uh, the Multiverse of Madness, the big thing that was left at the end of the season was what happened to the residents of Westview. These people had a massively traumatic experience. Yeah. They knew what was going on at all times, and they were experiencing the hellscape that was Wanda Maximoff's nightmares. They were all experiencing that. So. What what I really like about this resolution to that story, this or what's happened with that story, everybody else is able to get on with their lives and they're looking at this other person that went through it all, who they think is Agnes. She's gone through all of this. They didn't know her as Agatha Harkness. They knew her as Agnes, a member of the town who went through the exact same trauma. So if she acts out, if she pretends that one day that she's a detective in a true crime TV show, they all kind of stand up and go, well, maybe it'll help if we play along with what's going on in her mind. Maybe yeah. that'll help out Agnes, our townmate, effectively. You know, that's what they've been, that's what they're doing. That's what they're trying to help Agnes with. Yeah. But the other kind of big reveal that may not be as clear in the episode is since the death of Wanda Maximoff at the end of Multiverse of Madness, that's broken the spell of who Agnes is. Agnes was put under that spell. All of her powers were taken away. She was put into this position of Agnes by Wanda Maximoff at the end of WandaVision. 
And because of her death, this spell is now weakened and she's starting to experience something else. This is why she's gone into the true crime thing. Well, it's Um, the illusion, isn't it? Because she still can't weave a spell. So you see her trying, you know, mm. you saw with the purple magic coming um, sort of very uh, Emperor Palpatine from her fingers. Right. Um, but you see her trying to weave a spell yeah. and realizing that she is without power. It's mm-hmm. her kind of feign to um, Agent Vidal as well, as we said, about, well, you want me to be formidable. Yeah. Uh, so the death of Wanda Maximoff hasn't given her back her magic ability. No, not at all. And also, she's still in this character of Agnes, but the death of Wanda Maximoff has almost made the spell threadbare. It's still tying her to this character of Agnes, but everything else in the world is starting to seep back into yeah. her. You know, the memories are starting to seep back in. The things that happened to her are starting to seep back in. So um, so I kind of like that. So I wonder if her starting to come back to herself, is that the reason why Vidal is able to find her now? Is that the reason why the Salem Seven are coming to vi- coming to see her now? Because that spell has started to dissipate, the one that uh, that Wanda had put on her, keeping her in character as Agnes in uh, in Westview. Is that's what ha- is that's why it's happening now, not three years ago? You know, you, you forget how long it's been since Wanda Vision came out. Like, the last episode came out in January twenty twenty one. It's it has actually been three years since yeah. that time. So, well, Vidal um, yeah. says an interesting thing. So I think that Agatha was cloaked when Wanda was there. I think the mm. death of Wanda hasn't cloaked her. So exactly. Vidal says after. Um, that you know she's been after her been after agatha um because before that she was hiding behind the 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 dark hold magic mm-hmm. uh, that she was trying to then absorb uh, the other interesting thing here is that in that face off with vidal and uh, agatha now that she knows who she is yeah. and is kind of lucid around the fact that she is a witch um she does kind of bait Vidal to attack her in the sense that it seems like she's still able to absorb the power because Vidal says, oh, that's cute because mm-hmm. it would kill me. Yeah. Um, so that absorbing of the power, like we saw again with her coven, like she tried to do with mm-hmm. Wanda Maximoff, is possibly still a thing. So that's what could reignite her magic or her ability to cast magic and yeah. weave a spell. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But I just love this reveal. I thought it was a really well written moment again. That's why you have the showrunner of, of WandaVision on board. And that's how you tie it back into Multiverse of Madness. Uh, this this whole reveal worked really, really well. Yeah, Loved definitely. It. Loved it. Our spell five really is just the closing out of the episode. Wanda does send off Agent Vidal. Is that her real name? I don't know. Is that just part of Agnes's um invention that it's Agent Vidal. I don't know whether she just happened to see her hair treatment products and went to uh, Vidal Sassoon. That's the agent's name that I'm going to give to uh, to this uh, witch that comes along. Or was that her real name? I don't know. But it closes out with Wanda realizing that she's kidnapped the teen, stuck him in her house, and that he has helped her out. And now she has to deal with that problem, right? Well, that's it, because he does, in his interrogation, Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I'm looking for the road, which, again, another little bit of a trigger here. Mm. We'll come in with our episode two podcast. Yes. Uh, But ultimately, you know, he is gaffer taped up um, around the mouth, uh, bound, and is (laughs) bunny hopping around uh, as well, wanting to be released. Uh, So... At this moment, the teen is very much still an unknown. Absolutely. Even though I might have an inkling who the teen may be. But I think it gets really interesting in episode two, which we'll cover on our second podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Speaking of hopping around, uh, we saw Senior Scratchy back as well from uh, (laughs) from WandaVision. Uh, Mr. Senior Scratchy. Yes, loads of theories uh, back when WandaVision was on as to who could have been transmogrified into uh, Senior Scratchy. But, uh, But he's back. He's there. At least well, being that's taken it. care of. So, Who yeah. he is. And equally yeah. with the teen at the police station, we do hear Detective Agnes saying, you know, 
He's got no name and there's no details mm -hmm. on the system. Not on the system. He's not on the system. Yeah. Um, and then the the final little kind of note thing I've got is that we also have Mrs. Hart as well because yes, uh, really. she knocks over the, the teen as he's running from uh, Agnes uh, uh, as she's chasing him down after mm -hmm. uh, catching him, breaking and entering into a house. Yeah. So we do have old Mrs. Hart from the 70s show. Yes, yes. And from one of of course. And of course one. from one division. Yeah. <laughs> Temperature up. Uh, yes. Just knocking down somebody. And again, you know, they had interactions throughout season one uh, of One Division. So when Agnes is going, get away from him, she seems to look at her like she doesn't know who this character is, who this person is. So another person in this fantasy who's playing another character, Mrs. Hart, just playing a woman driving a car, I guess, <laughs> in this scene. Uh, but I'm sure we'll talk much more about Deborah Jerup uh, playing Mrs. Hart as the season goes on. Uh, any other notes? Any, anything else we want to talk about before we close out this episode, John? Um, no, the only note is that the, the brooch, or should I say the locket, uh, as they discover that Agatha finds, which is the one that she has, it's got a piece of her in it, mm -hmm. um, and that on the front of that the figures are of the maiden mother and crone oh very good very good yes a lock a lock in the locket any notes from yourself Derek nope no other notes from me excellent uh, in which case do you defend Agatha all along episode one seekest thou the road I absolutely defend this episode I really enjoyed uh, jumping back into this world and I wasn't expecting it um, when we turned on these episodes I was expecting a brand new show with Agatha, Agatha Harkness in there that would deal with the situation really quickly you know something like Wanda Maximoff dies and then ooh the spell is broken Agatha Harkness is back whereas opening it with this episode that's a nod to a true crime show instead of um, a nod to comedy shows from the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s that, that was Wild Division worked really really well for me I loved the idea that uh, this is how you would open up the second season um, because everybody's in the joke this time last time even though we saw three different episodes of the show on the opening day we weren't in on the joke by the end of the season we were yeah we got what was going on with wanda maximoff uh, we knew what was happening with her whereas when you open this season with um agnes as a detective and trying to break through this spell that's been put on her by Wanda Maxwell. I thought it was a really good tool to get you into the season and then it's broken by the end of the first episode so we're not going to see that trope again or that that idea again as we go along throughout the season um it's the way of opening the season and making sure you know this is one division season two and i'm all in for it i definitely defend uh this opening episode i think it worked really well and having watched the second episode we know that there's lots more to talk about and this it, this season's going to have its whole brand new story for these characters that's really cool uh john how about yourself do you defend agatha long episode one Yes, uh, I do defend uh, this episode of Agatha all along. I give this four maidens, mothers and crones out of five. Mm. I think this is a bridging episode and I really like how they've done it, to be honest. Um, I think it took me the second watch to kind of really enjoy it. I think um, I think fresh in, it can be, it seem a little, dare I say it, procedural. Um, <laughs> but it's like when you realize that there is an homage being played to season one of one division yeah and i think just the way it plays out is really really good i like that they're kind of riffing on season one mm -hmm. i think it ultimately does make it even though it's its own thing um it does make it in the world of one division yeah. and connected to that story as well as multiverse of madness so in that sense it's really really good i like the mystery of the teen played by joe Locke. Mm -hmm. i like um uh, the 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 rival witch agent fbi agent uh, vidal which we don't know her actual name i love the kind of nugget of the salem seven which presumably are her coven mm -hmm. uh, wanting revenge maybe yeah yeah um, that's how I kind of am thinking of it at the moment. And it's great just to have those members of Westview um, back in for this opening episode. Yeah. So, yeah, I really, really uh, do defend this episode. I'll give it four uh, maidens, mothers, and crones out of five. Fantastic. I guess that's it for our first episode. We're not going to talk about the, the theories that we have about who those characters are because we've got a second episode to record. 
Um, oui, so oui. we will definitely talk about uh, the teen. We'll definitely talk about uh, the characters and what's what we think is going on in the world of Agatha all along in our second episode. But we'd love to hear your thoughts. Please email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com with any thoughts you have on the season so far of Agatha all along. You can also pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries with your feedback on each and every episode of Agatha Long. But we have one last piece of business for this podcast. We need to pop on over to the Coven's Cauldron for our pub quiz, I think, John. Yes, uh, fellow defenders, fellow quizzers, welcome to the Cauldron Quiz, uh, which is the Agatha All Along pub quiz. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is episode one, which means, of course, straight into question one. Two names are revealed on the toe tag in the morgue, W. Maximoff and A. Harkness. But what dates are beside each name? Very good. That's the first question of our six questions for the Agatha All Along pub quiz. Please email us with your answers at the end of the series to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Gather together all the correct answers and you could be in with a chance of winning some Agatha Harkness goodies. If you missed any questions throughout the season, or if you do miss any questions throughout the season, pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustry.com. There'll be a pub quiz question page up there for Agatha all along, which will have all the questions that we're asking on each of the podcasts. But just as a reminder of question one, uh, two names are revealed on the toe tag in the morgue, W. Maximoff and A. Harkness. But what dates are beside each name? Fantastic. That's it for our coverage of Agatha All Along. Episode one will be back next time with episode two of Agatha All Along. Yes, circle sewn with fate, unlock thy hidden fate. Ooh, yes. Hey, nonny, nonny, here we come. <laughs> really looking forward to talking about that second episode. Uh, we hope you stay with us. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much, fellow defenders, for joining us for Marvel's Agatha All Along. Until next time, remember, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. See you later, witches. Bye.